Well, they blew up all the chickens in Bonanza last night. Now they burned down the jobs board, too. Down at the showdown, they're getting ready for a fight. Gonna see what them merchant boys can do. Now there's trouble busting in from CBS. And Jonathan Karsh can't get no relief. Gonna be a rumble by the microwave. And the town council's hanging on by the skin of their teeth. Well, now everyone cries, baby, that's a fact. But everyone that cries chugs their root beer back. Put your ghost star on, show bandana pretty. And meet me at Kid Nation in Bonanza City. And you could call me CEO of the PAB. And I'm Stevie Best Believe Me, and I'm here <laughs> to say I took off my diaper because it's not in the diaper day. <laughs> Have you been recording? I recorded a little bit of it. Nice. Wow. There's going to be a little bonus for our Kid Nation Nation heads. For our future kids that we toss into the desert. <laughs> the KNN Army. Hey, kids. Welcome back to the Kid Nation Nation. Well, hello, children. Welcome back to the Kid Nation Nation. How are you all doing? Hey. Hey. Well, hey, I didn't see you there, little babies. Welcome to the Kid Nation Nation for big boys and big girls and big uh, thems, too. I was, I just, my brain went, be inclusive. And then I just like did that. Were you doing a kindergarten teacher? I don't even, I was doing like a Mr. Rogers S. So yeah, he's basically like a grown ass kindergarten teacher. Uh, Today I I got sent a link that was (laughs) Mr. Rogers (laughs) versus Julia Child in a PBS boxing match. And I was like, oh my God. Did they really box? I was like, what kind of like crazy PBS broadcast was this? And no, it was an SCTV sketch. SCTV. Second City TV. Oh, I, th- a, I heard E S E. I was like Southeast Television. And then when you said boxing, I was like, maybe it was Canada and it was Boxing Day. No, it's just your favorite late seventies Canadian sketch comedy. Oh, so TV it was show? Canadian. They did have Boxing Day. It was just a Boxing Day celebration. Oh, it was a Boxing Day sketch. Yeah. Fucking. Anyways, <laughs> this was a good. We're back. Just want to put that out there. Yeah, we're back. We're back. I mean, the last few ups have been a little like too much and we're really just going back to basics going back to old formulas there's some even i feel like nods to previous eps i think the producers are like this is getting this is not the tone we want and i think they just really switched some gears back yeah. into like old this felt like like a, this felt like ep two yeah no no a- episode 11 i just like the recess part is definitely a return to form for kid nation a- after the last one which we saw some very dark moments some undertones of fascism uh, this is an episode that starts with Taylor basically espousing the the, the great benefits of eugenics. Oh, uh, <laughs> right away. So we get a Chiron up top that it's day 31. You know, I also, this was the first time I realized the scale of Bonanza. It's huge. Is it? Uh, do, you, do you mean outside of the, like, the, the main strip and town? I mean, the amount of cabins, like the amount oh, of structures really? they have is like really big. I'd love the blueprints on that bad boy. Um, but well, yeah. How, how many kids to a cabin? <laughs> I mean, I feel like they all sleep in like five total cabins. Like, I feel like there's not that. Well, there's probably boys and girls for each team. So two, four, six, eight. So they sleep in probably eight I, cabins. I bet you there's just four cabins. Just one for each gender for each. I do get oh, the wait, vibe that teams. maybe they co-ed sleepover sometimes. No, you're right. There, there's probably eight. I mean, why would it? The whole point of the show is to co-ed sleepover. Pretty much. Have you ever did you did you ever have co-ed sleepovers as as a no, kid? No, no. I teen? mean, I, I mean, I never went to summer camp. If my mom when my mom would have suggested, I fucking squashed that. I was like, Jeanette, I'm sorry, <laughs> but I'm putting my foot, my little tiny foot, <laughs> down. The only time I went to camp was for Hebrew school in either fifth or sixth grade. This is a good story, actually. My I so my Hebrew school class was like six or seven people, seven kids, and we were like. So even though I, I hated them all and I didn't talk to any of them, we were stuck together. And they, they all thought I was the weird kid, which I was. Wow. But my mom forced me to go on a weekend trip 
in the mountains somewhere outside of LA. Mm. And it was just a weekend, like Friday night, Saturday night. We get picked up by mommy on Sunday. Mm -hmm. And then on Saturday, I was like really feeling alone, really feeling bad. Wait, where where are you going? Like, where are you? We're, we're just in some like mountainous area, maybe the San Gabriels. Maybe oh, so Angeles this is sport. this is relatively rugged. Yeah, no, no, I wouldn't say rugged. We had cabins. We had a nice like d- dining it. place overlooking mountains and like the. It's the, like built in camping. Like you didn't have to do too much labor to n- camp. No, many generations of little Hebrew boys and girls. I don't know. I called myself a Hebrew. I, you know, <laughs> maybe not in Israel. You know, like, I mean, didn't I, you walk through the Red Sea? Sir? Yeah, yeah, no, I can totally trace myself all the way back to Abraham. Cute. But anyways, on the Saturday, I was feeling really bummed out. And really sad and depressed. And then I hear like a screech. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? And marmot. I, tr- I turn and varmint now. No, I, marmot. Marmot. Don't know what that is. It's like a beaver. It goes like. Aah! I don't know. Oh. But I turn and go and look at the bathroom. And I see a naked kid run out. Ew. And it's this fucking little kid. I forget his name. I'll just say Adam because there's like three Jewish <laughs> names. It sounds like it. And he was one of the, He was a kid in the grade below me but he was kind of a bully and he would like make fun of me sometimes and here he was standing completely naked and i looked at his dick and it was still a tiny little kid's dick like he hadn't gone through puberty yet okay like like okay so when you're a boy wait how old are you i think i was 12 so okay, I'm, I'm assuming they'd there'd still be little kid dicks on well here's the, the thing about about dicks is that when you're like and baby. please mansplain me dicks i know you have well i'm, I'm, I'm explaining like seven-year-old dicks so hopefully i don't have to <laughs> this is also them. not a new territory for this pod so far so keep going little boy dicks are straight up like little worms Ew, with, a, the, the t- with a tight nutsack <laughs> no and, and, i know well, i've heard and, I, and I know as about you go that. through puberty it's super gradual and slowly becomes <laughs> to look more like a normal like dad's dick like the kind of dad <laughs> dick that like scared you when you were really young they are scary so I guess mine had been like gradually turning, but like not enough to notice. But when I saw his dick, I was like, Ugh. oh my God, you have like the same dick as like a three year old. Stop. Did you, you say little that? little punk. No, I didn't say that. Oh. I just like looked and You just laughed. like, you just, you silently stared at him and thought that. Yeah. And it turned out a kid who was in my grade, he had stolen why was all he, of his Why clothes. was he, na- oh, there. That's the, that was the question and yeah. there was the answer. He end, was, end of story. This, wow. was, this was my Bonanza City <laughs> that, experience. That was a pure prank to steal all the clothes. That's like classic 70s like, oh no, I'm trying to lose my virginity quick at camp, but my clothes were stolen. Oh and, yeah. And, and even more so, it's your classic like nightmare. Yeah. You're in, like you're, you're stuck. You're stuck in front of your entire class completely mm. naked. That's pretty cool. I don't think I ever went to like a proper camp. I did like Girl Scout stuff, but it was always like, I don't even think we did it over. No, maybe we did like one overnight, but that wasn't the real hot ticket. The hot ticket was the lock-in. Did you ever have a lock-in? No, but I'm going to guess it's like they locked you in high, quote unquote, locked you into your school and you had a sleepover. Oh yeah. You get locked in. So we got, it's seventh grade. I'm in Catholic school. Morning. Very like prude at the time, you know, quickly grew into a slut, like only a few years later, but still in a prude phase. And the lock-in like, My mom would not let me, like, go where boys were or, like, be alone with boys. And the lock-in, like, evaporates that concept in one night. Like, it's just, like, it's our purge, basically, (laughs) to, like, say, if I wasn't allowed to sleep over with boys, well, one night, it's, like, allowed because the teachers are there. But they turn (laughs) off all the lights in the YMCA. So Uh we all were locked in the YMCA, the whole seventh grade class, but it's a small Catholic school, so it's what? Like 40 of us, right? Yeah. And it is just really dark. There's spin the bottle going on. There's makeouts galore. Like, it's are, like a horny fuck fest. Are there like teacher chaperones in the same building? They're like. Would you say it was in the gym? It was in a YMCA building. Right. right. So there's like Basically. basketball courts. There's like racquetball courts. There's like tons of courts. Like, it's huge. It's a complex. There's like a jungle gym in there. Uh-huh. Like, it's. It's and it's like kids go be fucking freaks all night. Do whatever you want to do. It's kind of like a like a, 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 a like this could be your life if you get good grades and go to college. You'll I guess you'll it, live with coeds and be fucking. It felt like we just took over a, a like a recreation center and like we had no electricity basically, <laughs> and we were locked in. The concept is also like and the doors are locked. <laughs> I was like, what? Did they really lock you in? I didn't test the doors, but I felt locked that in. That seems like a fire hazard. I don't know. If you know, mentally, I was locked in. Locked into that D. <laughs> I I was locked in a D, and I don't know where the teachers were. I think they were probably all in like a room probably like reading like slut mags and like smoking dubs. I wouldn't be or shocked. Maybe they were like, you know, 
kissing. Oh, Maybe this some was of a the chance. For, this was a chance for some like lesbian exploration That's away what, from their husbands. Oh yeah, no, totally. Um, probably mean, w- w- one of my favorite things in TV shows is when like the cool young teachers kind of like are like, oh, I like you. I like oh, you, too. you teach English. I teach history. We both teach in the same public school and face the same trials and tribulations that public school educators face. Yeah. Okay. Before. Okay. This is like totally me, but I'm going to have to do this before I finish the lockdown story. I have to interject with that. I had a hot history teacher named Miss Beep and <laughs> um, I was going to say it. Um. And she was really hot. She wore like Abercrombie and Fitch tight ass plaid pants. Like she was obviously like 24 years old Ooh. and like hot bubble butt. You could see she's wearing Abercrombie. So I'm like, oh my God, she shops at the same store as we do. Like this is so, <laughs> <laughs> this is so cool. But she was a farter <laughs> and she would fart all the time. And every time she would fart, she would take the podium and screech it. Like she would move it a little uh, bit to, d- d- to, cover, <laughs> to cover the noise of the fart just to make it like screech for a second. That's so, so that's my story funny. of like the hot teacher where I become who farted and screeched her podium nonstop. Um, <laughs> that's right. Wait, that, that brings up another super short story. Okay. In, in, in fifth Hit me. Gr- in Hit fi- me. It's almost the nation's almost over. Hit me. I know. It's so sad. In, in fifth grade, we had a TA who was this kind of like hot Latina girl in like her late 20s okay and the thing about her was every time she bend over we could see her thong Ugh. and me and my two friends aaron and crescencio were just like fucking like the ugh, we were horned up about it and one time i was leaned over to the left and i leaned over, and then i kind of like moved my hand to the right x just like super fast and i accidentally touched her butt no and she turned around and was like pablo and like Whoa. my friends and they hide five me to this day. Oh, I mean, your story was kind of creepy and my story was kind of funny, but I appreciate you sharing it because um, it's the t- this is the time to do so. It was on accident. I mean, anyway, so I'm k- flashback. I'm back at the lock-in <laughs> and I'm chatting with the gals and I'm like, he's cute. He's cute. Yeah, I think he's cute. Should we sleep in the racquetball court? I don't even know. Um, where should we bring our sleeping bags? So yeah, all your sleeping bags and shit are there. It's so fun. And then the boys come up and they're like, hey. And I'm like, yeah. And they're like, can we get your lip gloss? And I'm like, what? And they're like, your chunky strawberry lip gloss. And I was like, okay. And they took it. And then like 40 minutes later, they came back. They're like, we smoked your lip gloss. And they sm- they rolled up lip gloss into a rolling paper and smoked it. Wait, what? Because this was like the same. I don't know if this was in every school. And I've heard mixed reviews. There was a certain, just like how kids would smoke like incense or oregano just mm-hmm, to like yeah. try it lip gloss like chunky chapsticky almost wads of lip gloss they would smoke they basically like smoked like a waterless chocolate hookah <laughs> <laughs> but i that's my big memory of the lockdown was being like a drug facilitator i was like wow so you didn't hook up you just you just sold drugs to someone and it was your lip gloss i played spin the i played a splash of spin the bottle but i kissed all the fuggos and i was pretty i like left after four seconds i was like this sucks like oh, i'm like kiss sean Ugh. Ew, Sean? I hate, like, I can't. If your name's Sean, you should probably actually, like, turn off because it's an annoying name. Um, So, anyways, just like these classic tales, we're back in classic Bonanza. Taylor is, we're, I mean, Taylor's back. We haven't seen her in a fucking grip. Yeah, this is our first uh, storyline in, I think, like, four episodes. And Taylor is just back in the chicken coop. And if we remember the chicken extravaganzas from, like, what? That was truly, like, episode two or three. Um, so they're back in the chickens. Taylor's going off about like chickens and how like they the ugly ones are should be yeah eugenics basically they should yeah. die. Oh, those furry head chickens with the big furry cheeks sticking out of their head and those are real like ugly. So I don't care about them. I think all the ugly animals should die and all the pretty ones should stay. Ugly people can put on makeup and they look pretty. Chickens can't do that. I tried that to my dog once and it still didn't work. So that was weird. And in the meanwhile, we have the side story, which I like this actually felt like some story producing. I was like, okay, this is fine. Sophia goes to big boys, Greg and Blaine is like, we need a big chicken dinner tonight. And he's like, like four chickens. He's like, she's like, keep going. And he's come, like, on, come on, come on. Like keep, five, keep up, keep up. Like five chickens. Oh, keep going. Six chickens. <laughs> come on. Keep going. Come on. It was like a classic scene. Seven in like a chickens. This movie. Keep going. Eight. Keep going. Are you, are, are, wait, wait, wait. Am, am I going to say a dozen? 
No, no, no. Like, bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. <laughs> I was about to correct you. Be like, I think ten. I think it was ten. <laughs> <laughs> um, so she, so Sophia asks the big boys to kill ten chickens. So they go over to the chicken coop, but not before Greg explains, "We're killing chickens, chickens, chickens," in yeah. re- in a sick ass reverb. It's like Madonna. We're having chicken tonight. Hey, hey, hey. And I feel. <laughs> Like I just got home, it, it, chickens. That, and, and the crazy thing about that effect, it wasn't added. It was just Greg was screaming so loud that it it, his voice reverberated through the canyons of Bonanza. It was just an echo in the canyon, Jacob Dylan. Then, <laughs> oh my God, Our, don't don't get us started on Jake on um, echoes in the canyon. We'll have to start a whole podcast on that Jacob documentary. D- but just so everyone knows, Jacob Dylan is our household enemy. <laughs> yes, uh, s- search at Pablo Goldstein, Jacob Dylan, or at Spaghetti underscore which Jacob Dylan, and you'll find lots of thoughts. I love the way you say my screen name <laughs> underscore um so they go over to the coop and it's just chicken world war ii once again we are in activist central it is like the civil rights movement it is like whose chickens are chickens it is antifa it is like so much <laughs> <laughs> it is nation kid nation tifa um and so taylor and her girl crew who includes Emily, who was the original chicken activist from yes. the first time. Emily's now become part of the Cool Girls, which I'm kind of proud of her. You know what it's kind of like? It's kind of like when Ty joins uh, the, the Cool Girls and Clueless. Totally. Emily's such a Ty. And Brittany Murphy's character, yes. Yes. Yeah, so I'm Rest not, you know, good for her. Um, so Taylor's like, please don't like kill the other ones. She didn't even say that. She's like, don't kill the chickens. They're my friends. They're prits and deadlocks. They're my love brown chickens. And I'm, we're sitting here watching Kid Nash, as we do, and I'm like, why don't they just kill the ugly ones Taylor hates so much? And then th- Sophia's like, hey, guys, exactly what I just said. Why don't we just kill the ugly ones or let Taylor pick which ones? Because, of course, everything's catered to Taylor. Yeah, and, and Taylor, in uh, the opposite of the Nazis, is like, we want the brown ones. The brown ones are beautiful. <laughs> And Taylor's also like, she's pretty funny in this. She's just saying like, I'm sharing my feelings. I'm allowed to share my feelings. I'm just sharing my feelings. And I'm like, get it. How has she not been on a reality show since? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, because this was her shot. I mean, this was a great. Taylor, as much as Taylor can be annoying, she makes Kid Nation to, in a lot of ways. Well, it wouldn't I, be the same show without her. No, I mean, especially the first half. Although we do tire of her pretty quickly. They could have like given her less airtime in the beginning but still kept her in gradually um so yeah they don't they're all fighting about chickens now they're talking about the eugenics of chickens and how you know they just want ugly chickens to die and it was like a it was just a funny classic kid nation start to an episode because there's like there's a disagreement over something really stupid and also really like (laughs) insane because then we cut to Greg bashing in the head of 10 ugly chickens (laughs) (laughs) and he's just I mean I guess that's obviously what Greg does in his day-to-day life. But I, if I was a parent watching my little Alex or Markel watch this teen bash chicken heads, I'd be like, I did not know they were going to do that. No. <laughs> I can't imagine they said they were going to do that. No, they but, were going to kill their own meat. But, that's but, shocking. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, like, I, I, I think if we were hypothetically raising a kid, it'd be good for them to know. Like, oh, babe. Oh, yeah. This is, this is the announcement. We're, we're pregnant. No. <laughs> Like, it would be kind of good to have your huh. kid at a young age, you know, like, look, like, I'm not going to make you be vegan or be a meat eater, but like, you should know, like, animals die but in a I'm pretty gu- violent way. And this, is, and this is the good way. But I'm going to take you to a Morrissey concert. So <laughs> buckle up, baby. We're not getting drinks during this intermission. Oh, my, my mind just like went in a million directions because A, we've been to Morrissey. I know, and I know. He's been since canceled. And, and I, was also, like, I was like, why more? Oh, because and, he's a vegan. And also we did get up during that section. And, and left. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. We saw Morrissey at the Hollywood. That's what I'm saying. You would take them to watch those clips. Yeah. No, I'm just telling the audience. We saw Morrissey at the Hollywood Bowl like literally two weeks before he got canceled. And during the meat is murder part where we just the, okay so morrissey wasn't on the big jumbotron the whole show but once it came time for meat is murder Ugh. fucking footage non-stop out the ass of chickens and cows getting slaughtered yeah and, let's just say it was brewski time <laughs> yeah and time to get a pretzel no meat was allowed in the venue then yeah night, which i had is to, fine in early uh night. sorry morrissey but i had to drain the weasel uh, sorry i know you like animals but uh wow Um, okay. So anyways, then we kind of pivot to just like life in the town. We see a fun little group outing of the nerds. Oh my God. The the nerd council. It's of course, it's Alex, it's Andre and it's fucking Jared looking like 
Kung Lao from Mortal Kombat. He has this amazing hat. His outfits have been really good. Honestly, Jared is second best dressed in second place to Markel, obviously. Yeah, I mean, Markel is best dressed because he has one look and he sticks with it. But Jared will have like a tie dye shirt. He'll be he's got good hats an and Asian good hat, like good accessories all around. And he just has like all that like you can tell his parents got him like outdoor stuff, which is really cute. Which is cute because he doesn't seem like an outdoors kid. Yeah, because in this nerd council, Alex oh my God. Alex starts it off by asking the nerds how many numbers of pi they can name, you know, not rounded off. And Alex says he says it so fast, but it's at least ten. Does anybody know most of the numbers of pi? It can't be rounded. Three point one four one five two nine. Three point one four one five nine two six five three five eight nine. That's fun talking about pi. Yeah, he says a bunch. He's like, I love talking about pi. And then I can't. I think Jared quizzes Anjay was like, "Was there life in outer space?" <laughs> and Anjay's like, "No." And he's like, "That's wrong. True. It's true. Two billion years ago, Mars. We have proof. They're from a chunk of Mars. Two billion year old fossilized bacterium." Yeah, Jared makes Anjay look like a fucking dumbass. But I enjoy their nerd. I like the nerds. Oh, no. it was amazing. The nerds are a great crew. I love them all. Overall, just great crew. So now it's time to actually read the journal because they didn't do it last episode yeah which is... they're, they're like nerd council now like town council yeah so the town council now has to read the journal because they just haven't done it before so the journal basically says you guys are all idiots and you should learn something yeah read a fucking book that's what it says it says read a fucking book and so the journal's like you guys should study here's some history books on uh, Bonanza City, and each one's about each district's color because that's how tribes were, ob- you know, obvi. Mm-hmm. And so they all get the journals, and most of them are like, "Oh, that's a good idea." And then Blaine's like, "My district is dumb as rocks, and they are not going to like this." And he's right because his district is, of course, has Taylor and Layla. <laughs> you want to read a book, Layla and, and Colton? Colton's like. I'd rather eat a squirrel than read one page but, of literature. But at least Colton has a good reason. It's like, yeah, no, he's going to be in a... When he grows up, he's going to work with his hands and it's going to be awesome. He doesn't need to read a book. Taylor, it's like... Yeah. You, you got to learn about these tribes. Yeah. So he's like, that's not going to work. And everyone's like, well, I'm pretty sure we have to read these for the challenge, right? And it's like, oh, yeah, the challenge. Who says that? What, do you remember? I think it might have been DK or Michael, but it gets brought up cue the meeting so now they have these books they go to have the meeting and they're like hey everyone in town so the journal said we need to study and get our education and we have these books and we're gonna all study them before the challenge and everyone's like no fuck learning i hate school fuck learning and then there's a then there's like a peppering of like laurel like oh i like school and then sophie like well i like school obviously 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 the green team likes school oh i know they're they're that classic girl in school who was just like i like school yeah i'm good at it (laughs) the green they like their pens and their papers and (laughs) i'm just perfectly perfect in every way yeah so they like school everyone's kind of yelling no there is like one random girl who i don't know who this is she's not a recognizable character but she says something like, oh, that's who's the one is like, yeah, this is probably going to be in the challenge, you fucking idiot. <laughs> so like we have to we have to study this. Yeah. Uh, it's like we're not doing this for fun. We're not reading about all the tribes that lived in Bonanza City. Right. So they're just like talking about for themselves. Fun. We get a really bad little interview moment from Jared in this in this. Yeah. J- I mean, I mean, Jared says a cool quote. It's what wh- who's that? Well, he says education is the start of civilization or something like that. But then he goes into like, if you're not educated, you'll flip burgers, which is so. Yeah. I mean, I th- that whole trope is still it's not a, like a broken. I can hear your beard itch like so clear. I'm just putting that out there. Ooh, it's ooh. lucky audience. <laughs> yeah, if you're a person that's into like beard creams and beard boxes and bird boxes, let, let me know and I'll start an only OnlyFans for my ASMR. Oh my god! So this this whole idea of like you, if you work in fast food, you're dumb, is just like a very basic kind of like privileged ass way to think, because or that you don't deserve to have the same amount of money or rights as like another occupation totally but you, you, you know the fucked up thing about it is like you know clearly it's still a, a, a trope we hear these days in the even though we still live we're like living in the age of five for 15 yeah but when i was like nine or ten because of rhetoric like this i would have assumed that working at mcdonald's because it is low pay it's easy right no it's not easy that's why i always like in my like more traditional office 
working spaces that I've worked since, you know, college, anytime someone makes a reference to that, I'm like, and I've worked customer service too, but it's so much harder to do that kind of cause I like used to work at a Jimmy John's. You're always on, you always have to be talking to people. You're always cleaning stuff too. Yeah. It's just like never ending and you have to do everything to like a corporation standards, which are really high. It's not like you can like those like uh movie images of like kind of greasy spoon mm-hmm. diner restaurants or like, or like a chill McDonald's like doesn't exist. No, it's nonstop. Unless you live, unless you're working at a McDonald's in like a town of 300 people. Yeah. You're, you're on your feet nonstop and you're just constantly barraged. Like when I look back on all the customer service jobs that I've had, I've been lucky where it's like I worked at a one screen movie theater. So it was super busy for 30 minutes and then I just chilled. But even this if you are at a like 300 person McDonald's, they're always scared like corporate's going to come in. So you always have to be like looking oh, yeah. busy or like cleaning. So no, I There's think no benefits I think things. fast food and just food workers in general work harder than most CEOs. So you should be paid a living, and you should just be paid a living wage. And also, here's my truth: I would work at a flower shop easily, and like, and I love people that work at flower shops. I'm just like too money hungry to do it. Like, if a flower shop just paid more, that would be my dream. I yeah. could easily do that. Yeah, Th- this is. Uh, I would messy bun the fuck out of my day to day life. Wear little smocks. I would just be so effortlessly chic. So, if you want to donate to my OnlyFans to like help me live on my chic flower girl fantasy um at spaghetti underscore witch on all platforms oh, actually oh, not even on all platforms. okay eris from final fantasy 7 is that it i don't even baby this you know is, i'm not gonna know that reference baby this is a gamer reference in an episode that's full of gamers and we are not yet there but okay so anyways yeah jared said something pretty lame but I think yeah. we think he's MAGA now anyway, so... But, but but yeah, I've uh, I've done a slight research on Jared, and the only thing I could find from him was, like, a 2009 photo uploaded to Facebook where he called Barack Obama a boob. Oh, well, that's, like, it's kind of random. Yeah. A- anyway, so okay. we, 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 we skip... We, we kind of see how the reading is getting done in all the various... Camps. Oh, yeah. We, we see Alex reading... Like, to, his life depends on it. He reads so fast, and, and Emily's like, slow down, babe. The value of the U.S. turquoise soared to 175000 during this period, and market demand was high until it went out of style around the turn of the century. Jeez, Alex. Alex, next time, go a little slower. A lot slower. I, I learned to read kind of fast. Same. So when I same. Was, ooh, another nerd. So when I, like, was seven or eight, I could, like, show off by reading that fast. I could, too. I also was very fast at texting at a young age. My grandpa really wanted to enter me into competitions. What do you mean texting? We didn't have I texting mean, until we were like. That's not true. We had texting at like fifteen or so. But I. Okay, I thought but you meant also like seven. Key, but keyboard typing too. Like I was oh, same. very fast keyboard. I think I started talking at like eight months old. I'm a, I'm just trying to brag and be a baby genius. I'm just putting it out there. Yeah. Well. Okay. Also, we're just nagging each other so that we can fuck harder cool, later. Cool. brag. I mean, I didn't say my first word till I was three, and my mom thought I was autistic. So there. <laughs> I mean, was she wrong? Uh, <laughs> also, most boys are don't talk till three, and if you know what I mean, that's my new. That's gonna be my new phrase. He didn't talk till three, if you know what I mean. If you know what I mean. <laughs> do, do you know what you mean, or are you just leaving that out there for people to... So to Green is learning through improv. Um, that's how they're they're like acting out, and Sophia's like, you learn a lot by like getting up and doing it, and and doing it. And I was like, that's pretty cute. Obviously, you know, she's an I love school girl. Yellow team, Avi, is not doing shit for Dick, and Layla, Taylor's little crony, if I was Layla's mom, I'd be so sad watching Layla just follow Taylor like a shadow. Oh, I know. I'd be like, girl, this is a toxic friendship. You do not want this. I know, but like, can you blame Layla? Like, I know, it's it, her little friend. It's, it's her friend, and, and it's also the Layla, popular and, girl likes her. And also Layla always dips when it's t- appropriate. She's True. not getting caught by the popo. <laughs> True. Yeah. She, she's that narc, I'm a ditch your ass friend. Oh, that's fucked up. But it, it does happen in this episode because the council members go and talk to Taylor and Layla in the chicken coop yeah. and are like, Look, we, we threatened you with taking away your prize last time. We didn't do it. You got to read your stupid letter from your stupid mom. Now, we're actually going to do it if you don't work. And Layla is like, you know what? I think that sounds like a good uh, good idea. I'm going to go work. Leaving Taylor as the only non-worker. So Taylor's in the egg house just standing up for what she doesn't even know. They're like, Taylor, why are you doing this? And she's like, I don't, I don't know. 
And it's like, okay. She's like, the story producers told me. I mean, I mean, I don't know. No, she's just a proud little girl who doesn't want to be wrong. She doesn't want to go back on her word or look weak or whatever. She's just like, she's just a stubborn little bulldog, basically. And yeah, so Layla dips and Taylor doesn't study. So we're basically left off like every team has studied to some degree. Um, you can tell Green is like bragging. Like we've studied a lot. Like we got this. We have this whole stupid book memorized. Um I think even the green was quizzing each other and they at one point <laughs> could quiz each other with when did the Navajos leave? And I'm like, they didn't leave. Like <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They were forcefully removed and poisoned. With it's like interesting disease. wording. Although as we get into this challenge, I, d I did like that almost all the history questions were about they, the Native American tribes of that region they were in. It was. It was mainly about that, which ties into some of the themes for later on. I mean, honestly, I expected it to be like, so in 1847, the brave Americans killed 70,000 uh, Mexicans at the Alamo. So it's showdown time and Karsh is like, so who hit the books? <laughs> and then Taylor's like, I did not. And he's like, Taylor, why didn't you hit the books? She's like, I hate reading. <laughs> and then <laughs> and he's like, okay, pioneers, time to start hitting the books, aka this challenge. I mean, honestly, this episode, I'm excited to talk about it because it's fuck. It was hyped. It was like a good, solid ep, and the challenge was doable. Yes. So, so in this week's challenge is just your classic pop quiz where Karsh is going to ask all the teams a question with three possible answers but the one twist is that there's three balloons in front of them each with an answer and they have to shoot a slingshot of nuts and bolts to yeah. shoot out the wrong answers well, they, so to the pop only the, ones to pop the answer balloons yes, is what they're them. called um which he keeps calling them answer balloons like that's what the not like the proper noun is for these Stop things. making answer balloons a thing karsh you gotta pop, and you have to pop all the wrong balloons and leave the remaining correct answer yes. so if you pop the right answer you fuck. Okay. Yeah, and then there's another final twist where at the end they will collect all of the remaining ammo, yes. if you will. They use the word ammo, which kind of whatever made me a little little uneasy because you know, uh, uh, school shootings. And well, because you know, they're pioneers. Uh, true pioneers. Uh, pioneers didn't have school shootings. They were better than us. Uh, they, their dicks smelled horrible, but they were still better than us. Um, I so mean, they I, probably would have done it if they had the and like the proper gear. I mean, honestly, pioneer Americans had a shit ton of guns too. We have a shit ton of guns that just happen to fire way more bullets. Mm -hmm. True. Anyways, this episode brought to you by Everytown. Yes, Everytown USA. Or uh, put in your code every single student. Yeah. To get 10% off your body armor backpack. I mean, it really is the tragic stain on American history. But yeah, anyway. I, and we're still living through it, and it's never going to end. But so the final, final twist, as I mentioned, is that they're going to collect all these ammo and ammunition. And then they have if, to it, measure if, it, it. if it fills up a bucket, they get the reward. Right, because... They'll determine the team order by who gets, like, the most right answers first. Mm -hmm. But then they won't get the prize unless they fill out the ammo little bowl. Yeah, it's kind of like the previous week or two weeks before where they could, they had to, what, use a wheelbarrow full of bricks? <laughs> the stones? rocks, like, the weighed out, like, different stones. The painted stones. The painted stones. Um, so they're just going, they're answering questions that are mainly about Native American indigenous history, which was like pretty cool. Except they do get to this one point where the yellow team, I think, answers one question with Pinto. Um, so then there's like one question that was maybe like, I mean, it's just too funny not to share where it was like, who inv not invaded, probably, who founded this land where Bonanza City was back in the day? Was it the Mexicans? Which <laughs> just, just reminded me, maybe it's because you and friend of the pod, Steve Fernandez, always talk about don't cry in front of the Mexicans from Once Upon a Time in Hollywood is yeah. your like favorite line ever. So the way Carr said it just evoked that image for me. But he was like, Mexicans, Spanish the Spaniards or the Ewoks. Oh, Ewoks. <laughs> and I was like, come on, we're really gonna... That, that was the only time we saw a question. Well, first of all, they only showed us the questions for the first four or five, and then they gave us like 20 shots of them answering in a row with no right. context. Yeah. But yeah, the Ewoks. I mean, oh. even you know, that's not. you're not a Star Wars fan, but you, you know the Ewoks. I guess like, and I'm just clarifying for dumb bitches like me, like the more ammo they use, the less their odds are of getting this prize. And red is 
blowing through ammo. Yeah, so so some of the teams Red like Red cannot pop a fucking answer balloon to save their lives. Yeah, so you know, so yellow has Hunter gr- no. or no, excuse me, green has Hunter, yellow has Colton, and these kids, especially Hunter who has these wrap around glasses looking like fucking Jack Ryan out there. He is <laughs> taking out balloons left and right, one shot, one kill, headshot. Yeah, I mean, they're doing really good and also Sophia on green is killing it. Sophia's on, great. On yes. the yellow team, I can't I think it was Blaine and some they were all Colton. Like, um, they were sharpshooters on those two teams. Like they would both pop a balloon at once. Red is, they're like yelling at Mike, like you got to pull it back farther. You dip wide. Yeah, I, and I, it's also, I, there's so many things you can do to make it go like pull it further. I know. I mean, but the thing is like, when you look at red team, it's like, they're pathetic. It's Alex. It's fucking Alex. Red team. Isn't Alex on red team? No, Alex on is on the blue. He's well, just, he's coasting on blue. He's staying safe on blue. Well, like, uh, red team has a I lot mean, of like, like shrimps. It's, it's like, like Gu- Jared, Mike. Gylan. I feel like Gylan could have pulled that thing back. Gylan couldn't Ooh, even pull that thing Gylan back. Gylan couldn't even move the wheelbarrow two episodes ago. True. Gylan is kind of a weakling. He's just a little ch- like little. Chubby. He just wants to play so, base. He looks like a strong. He's he strong. just wants to wear a beanie. He just wants to watch Nightmare Before Christmas. Just let him live his life. I love Gylan. Gylan I love Gylan too. But Red is a wimpy. Is a diary of a wimpy team. Let's just be real. <laughs> <laughs> um, so they're grinding. I mean. Yeah, what's his face? Hunter? Yeah, Hunter's like truly killed people before. He's doing really good. And these kids also, this challenge great because since they're not doing nonstop cardio, they're like all sitting on these hay and they're just grinding oh on the God. hay and they're just like dancing and it's really fun. There's that one shot of them celebrating and Blaine does his sea walk, but then a Markel is, yeah, like you said, he's riding on the fucking hay. Yeah, everyone's grinding. like grinding and like having, uh, throwing hay. They're having so much fun. So tight. Um, So green is the upper class, which is like totally new vibes for green. They've been killing it this last few weeks. Mm-hmm. Michael's really proven to be a great leader. <laughs> um, and then blue is the merchant, yellow is the cooks, and red's the laborers. And so it's now it's, now it's time to pour out the ammo. And you know we don't know what we're gonna get. It doesn't seem promising. Red really was not hidden and connecting. Um, so you know they all pour it, and it's. I mean honestly, by the third pour, we're like it's. Fun. They probably got it. And then DK, being the star that he is, he goes to pour it out, and he puts one measly ammo on the top of the pile and they're like what no come on dk and then he does a fake on and just pours the rest and they get they finally they've not won a, a group prize no. in in what this is like maybe three episodes or so something like that but praise the lord and pass the ammunition they <laughs> fucking filled that bucket up i wonder if they if like pr- production was like we got to edit these challenges guys <laughs> like they haven't won in like four fucking challenges i mean there's been a few challenges where i'm like they could have easily added five more minutes, and they did. Like, and I, I like, I, I feel like I, I have some sneaking suspicions. Wow. Like the game, the challenge producing was uh, not up to code. Quiz yeah. show. Anyone so seen a quiz show? It's prize time now, and you know, it's always you know a good versus evil, grandparent approved versus Zoomer approved gift package. And first up is we have a library and it's a big owl library with encyclopedias and manga and like a bunch of dumb shit. Th- that's the thing when they when they show us the shots of the library which is just one bookshelf. A big bookshelf but nonetheless one bookshelf. It's full of like fucking encyclopedias and textbooks. Right. And it doesn't look cool and then yeah. there's uh, no Johnny Tremaine on that shelf, I'll tell you that. Yeah. And then <laughs> and then the second plot plies is a arcade. And it's, and, and an it's arcade. like a stacked arcade. Oh yeah. I mean, look, they have a like a Cruisin' USA sequel. So they have a racing game. They have one of those uh four player fighting game arcade machines. It looks like an X-Men, but I don't think it's X-Men. They have an old school uh, arcade machine in the form of Joust. And they have DDR and fucking pool and air hockey. Yeah, and it's free. Like, you don't have to pay. And there's plenty of games nope. for everybody. Like, yeah. it's not like a wasted... Because some of the, like, fun prizes were like, well, only two people are really going to get to enjoy this thing. Yeah, there's like, we, we'll give you three ponies to do your mail. But here you have, like, seven arcade games, two classic games. You could easily entertain, like, 20 kids. And that's just the kids playing it, not the kids looking. So Karsh is like, all right, time to pick knowledge or frivolous digital <laughs> things that are going to make you a school shooter one day, children. Jonathan Carr is like Principal Skinner. All right, <laughs> children. <laughs> uh, he is very Skinner. Uh, so 
a great line. And I, you know, the town is roaring for the arcade. Let's be real. There's a few bookworms who are like, I like to read. And it's like, bitch, who, no it's one cares. It's like, shut up. Also, there's fucking seven days left. So, but Taylor has truly the best line of the episode. The man in the city library looks corny. Took the words right out of my mouth. And I was like, it does look corny. It really doesn't look that great. It looks pretty lame. And she's like, and I hate reading once again. It it should have been a bookshelf full of like, Where's Waldo and Captain Underpants and like an Animorphs. Oh, like the Scholastic Book Fair. Yeah, books that kids, I mean, when you're four and five or uh, excuse me, fourth (laughs) or fifth grade and you want to get kids who might not be into reading for good reason, because it's fucking boring. And I say that as someone who likes books to read, you get them like flashy graphics. A fun book. Captain, Captain Underpants in every single book had a thing where you would move the page back and forth and it would create a little little cartoon. Oh, that's That's fun. I mean, I love a young adult, you know, like a diary from a real teenage girl who's like going through a breakup or something like that. That's really, or a ye old diary with wilted pages on the side because it's my diary from the Titanic and it survived from that. That's how I found out about Japanese internment camps. I read a a, a, (laughs) a fifth grade book that was kind of like an American girl, but for guys. Mm. And it was just about like a little California boy who like went to an internment camp. And I was like, Wait, this happened like 30 years ago? Yeah. Well, wait till you find out. There's a lot of other camps <laughs> <laughs> that have existed uh, during our historical oh, time. Oh, baby. I knew about those Jewish camps. Tell, let me tell you what. They, they, uh, remember I told you about Jewish summer camp? What do you think I was doing <laughs> oh over there? Oh, my God. Um, so, Guylan screaming at the top of his lungs. I've never been to a free arcade in my, <laughs> in my life. And it's like, that's a good point. And so, they go over to the side. And Greg says what we're all thinking. He goes, guys, he's saying like, Use these books for knowledge. But we have like eight days left. Let's have some fun. And they're like, good point. Like, what are you really going to learn in like eight days? Like, who cares? Oh, totally. It's maybe the most practical thing ever seen in Kid Nation. And and this is a great inverse of last week where the big boys were making all the wrong choices. Yeah, it's a peaceful week here. Everyone's in agreement. Yeah. The vibe is right. I mean, maybe the stars have aligned. Astrologically, everyone's in a good place. Oh, but we, we missed another good uh, Taylor quote. What? Uh, you brought up the corny line. She also says in a line that at first confused me, hey, let's pick the books because she is not getting the prize. Oh, we said that. We're like, why is she picking the books? Because that's the other part. Taylor's not allowed to have the prize. She's not allowed in. And this time the big boys mean it. And they pick the arcade. Crowd goes yes. wild as so they sick. would. Um, it's now day thirty three, and Taylor's not allowed into these arcades. And the every kid is in the arcade. The arcade is. I mean, it's just yeah. a sequence right now of everyone doing DDR oh, and yeah. racing games and pool and this. And it's just fun. Um, we yeah. do have some like holier than thou people. Hunter games for a little, and then he's like, oh, I'm going to get back to dishes. And then he tells some sob story about how his daddy inspired him to be a hard worker. And it's like, Hunter, we get it. Yeah, you're, we, don't worry, dude. You're going to get this star yeah. sooner or later. Like, chill out. You're, 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 you're as blue as a collar. You're going to get the star. He is a blue collar holler. And Sophie is the same vibe. She's like, I don't really like arcades. I'm a, <laughs> this is her great quote of being a 30-year-old trapped in a 13-year-old's body, which, you know, Hard relate. I'm a 30-year-old trapped in the body of a 14-year-old. Yeah. Oh, no, totally. I mean, I, I definitely felt that as a, as a child. Yeah. And she's just a, you know, she's just an adult person. She also made her own little mini library. So that even just shows we didn't need the library. Yeah. D- during the town council, like, huddle after the, the rewards were presented, someone mentions, hey, there are books in the general store. We can just buy them. And yeah, then Sophia just buys them all with like $8. She buys them out. She makes like a little like teepee hut sort of thing. And it has like a little quiet reading teepee, which is cute. And I think Alex was in there and he was like, oh, yay, I'm in the reading teepee. Um, So that's what they're doing. And Taylor is not allowed in the arcade. And Taylor is feeling that ramification. So she goes to the kitchen and she washes the back load of dishes that has been there since probably day one. Yeah. I don't get how these kids like have like just have you just well, need permanent dishwashing shifts. I I I I guess but the, the thing is what, yeah when when I saw that pile of dishes How often are they eating? I feel like they're never eating. No, they're eating. I mean, you got to remember this is what 37 or 38 kids, which means that There's Oh yeah. I was going to say no, there's 40 but they some leave. I forget. I mean, it sounds it seems like they're having three meals a day. Yeah. So we're talking about over a hundred dishes produced every day. Yeah. So I, I definitely get how these dishes pile up. Oh, and 
uh, I forgot to add in because honestly, Zach's kind of fallen off my radar. But Zach goes to talk to Taylor, and he's convinced he's like the only one that can get through to her. He does. I don't remember. That. It was such a blip, but he just is like they think they know how to talk to Taylor, but I do. And he went in there, and he's like. She's like, it sucks. He's like, it does suck. He's just like being therapist to her. He's like affirming like what you feel is valid. I hear you. And she's like, okay, well, I'm going to do it. And he's like, okay, thanks, Taylor. And it, it's like a, re- it was like a minute. It was really oh, quick. Yeah. Well, doesn't DK have kind of like a really, like a psychological breakthrough with her where he's like, what are you getting out of this? And she's like, I, I, I don't know. <laughs> and well, that was earlier in the chicken coop, but she doesn't uh, really break through. She's still holding her ground. She still kind of has a grudge on the older council boys. Yeah. Um. So now Taylor is, on a dishwashing mission, she is dishwashing up a storm. And Greg, he's like her honorary older brother. He has a soft spot for her. He's like, Taylor, you're now allowed in. And he carries her in the arcade. And she starts ddr her ass off and all is well. I mean, Taylor really has never punished very long. No. But also these kids, they're kids trying to punish other kids. So well, it's but, weird. Yeah, but also like clearly she grew up in a home where like she was not punished no in any way <laughs> well, also taylor's kind of smart and she knows like you guys can't punish me your fa- your kids like she yeah. kind of is just like ahead of the curve she's like i fucking run my mom and dad into the ground every day yes. they're little nubs of a pencil compared to me one of those big blue pencils that they give first graders to learn how to write yes so now it's day 34 sophia is walking through the town in the morning and she's like this place is a fucking ghost town it is deserted why is nobody doing anything I'm making breakfast for all of you, which, no, Sophia, nobody asked you to. No, but she, you, you know. You can make a little breakfast. If, if that was me, I'd be like, make a little breakfast for yourself, but you don't have to make breakfast for everybody. Yeah, I mean, you're in the green team. You're upper class. You don't have to do shit you don't want to. But yeah, the entire yellow team is in the games I room. I mean, every, not even just yellow Some team. Some call it an arcade. Everybody. With everybody else. Everybody's yeah. in there. So Sophia goes in and she's like, Blaine, what the fuck is up? Yellow team should be cooking breakfast, and you guys are all in here, and you're the leader. And, and then Blaine's literally like, hold on, I got money on this game. <laughs> he just, he like tells her, like, chill the fuck out. Like, he uncut gems her, like, real quick. Yeah. And he's like, nah, bitch, I got money on this pool game. And she's like, I don't give a shit. You're the leader. And he's like, he's like, when I'm done with this game, I'll go take care of it. And she's like, yeah. you're a bad example. And, and Which that- I'm like, I kind of get. It's true. If Blaine's saying, I got you all in charge, but no one's making breakfast it's it's bullshit but also like just let him shoot his last ball like come I mean, on like, yeah, cut him to like. also in one of my favorite parts of the episode blaine pockets the eight ball to win and then greg immediately is like you didn't call it you didn't call it sorry you didn't call a pocket which it's sorry so bro it's so bro but also like those are the rules how does this kids know i hate that rule so i'm on team no rules but it's part of, it's part of the rules if you if you when you sink the eight ball you have to call the pocket because if you call another one that's an accident i don't care Uh, also i feel like no person unless you're a professional really plays by exact rules in any game like scrabble or this like that's not a professional rule that's like a super basic ass pool rule you call the pocket for the eight ball greg is 100 percent right blaine should give up his buffalo nickels Sound off if you think that rule sucks because if it gets into an accidental pocket that's just good luck yeah, yeah, and sound off if you think there should be four strikes and you're out. <sighs> okay, anyway, <laughs> so now it's time for the town hall meeting. I don't know, this was like a random thought to me, though, because I think it was like immediately this, like, Sophia being like, you have a gambling addiction, everybody, <laughs> and everyone's like, shut up, bitch. And but, I wish. But this is also like an episode where it was all about, like, indigenous history, but also they put in a town casino in the midst i don't it's just very like i'm like did they think about these themes Wait, it's, or not am I ca- doing- it's not a casino it's an arcade it's a child's casino maybe they're not winning tickets they're betting money okay but that's like i'm as a as we- a child of a former gambling addict well you're always an addict but i'm gonna call it i was triggered i saw this i can't unsee it uh, okay sound off if you agree with me oh my god do you hear that it's a roaring sound of sound ba- bars are casinos my uh uncle uh paul schwartz's basement is a casino i'm just saying it's very similar vibe they're up all night it's windowless they're just cranked it's baby vegas right now you just hate gamers i f- fuck the shit out of all, <laughs> all gamers just so you know um i've watched many videos true games. um so now they're in the town and everyone's like, so who likes the, cas- the casino? Uh, who likes the <laughs> Not casino? Not this topic again. <laughs> and pretty much everybody does, but there's a few people who raise their hands. No, of course, Sophia. 
And she's like, it's like ma- wasting everyone's time. DK is also like, I'm fed up with the casino. Mm-hmm. Um, he, he hates James Woods' performance. Yeah. So I don't know how they get to this quick agreement, but they're like, okay, we're going to padlock the casino for when during it's going to have operating hours, which is what I suggested yeah. when they first got to the casino. Also, it is what DK, we, we, we glossed over this. DK, when they first uh, reward the prizes, he like tells kind of, he tells the, some of his kids like, hey, we got to haul water. We got to fill this thing up. Oh, halfway, right. And then we'll play games and we'll be good. And the kids are like, no. And Jared and Mike skip work to go. Yeah. They're, to, to go play. The kids were being naughty. Let's be real. Um, so they're going to pad like the arcade. And when they said that, there was an audible gasp in the crowd. It was so funny. They were yeah. all like, oh! <laughs> and Colton is not happy. He kind of says a slur and he's not really into it. Wait, what does he say? He says, we got bleep. Oh, we got gypped. Yeah. Yes. So, mm-hmm. you know, eh, I'm just, uh, it, the way he said it, you could tell like, We've talked about this in previous episodes. Like you can tell that's exactly how his dad said. He's like, "We got you." Yeah. <laughs> to, to, to be fair, people did not know "jip" was like a slur until like three years ago. It's true, but I'm just I'm I'm kind of woker than everyone. You're so, woker, so, um, right? That's what I love, baby. Um, so Sophia is randomly appointed a new position in town. Oh yeah, she becomes. I mean, look. I, I, I hate to keep bringing up Deadwood like three episodes in a row, but the first season do, of Deadwood... Do you? Because I think you like bringing I up. love it. The first season of Deadwood is literally about a man who gives up his sheriff star to move to a town, and by the season finale, he has to put that sheriff's badge back on, and just like Sophia, they both become sheriff. Yeah, and she says, Clint Eastwood, eat your heart out. Clint Eastwood, eat my ass. Sophia is a cop, and all cops are Sophia. So. <laughs> <laughs> all Sophias are bastards. <laughs> um, so... That was just, she's going to just enforce the rules, make sure people are doing their jobs. I mean, she's already kind of been doing this, but now she gets a title and, yeah. you know, Honestly, and a sense of power. I kind of love this because it, it, it is like Deadwood. We're seeing how governments and societies become like what they are now. And we see this government council like if she enforce, create this new position. Right. Like if she enforces, the council will be able to better regulate other shit or whatever. Yeah. Cause they, they, they really do need someone who's not a politician who's just going to be out there like, yeah, enforcing rules. Yeah. Making and sure letting the council know gonna... like, Hey, they're not doing their job. Yeah. They don't get the gold star. They don't get their word. Also it's day 34. So like know, maybe a little, a little, late. Too, a little late. Um, <laughs> but what can you do? Um, so the gold star winner is drum roll. It's Hunter with his perfect flipped up to front boy hair. Come on down, Hunter. Hunter. Um, you know, Hunter outed his broke ass dad for episode upon episode <laughs> just to get that gold star. He's like, my dad is a hard working, uh, jobless man. My, my, my dad is jobless and he's too old to, to uh, volunteer for the Iraq war. So he really needs some money. And the mm-hmm. town council gives it to him in the form of a, a gold star worth $20,000. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I know we've kind of talked, like, who cares, Hunter? He's like a s- side character. But Hunter really killed it in the slingshot challenge. Also, oh, yeah. And it Hunter's like phone kid. call home was the best parent phone call oh, we've seen. Hunter's, amazing. Hunter's dad is dope as fuck. I'm sorry for all those words I said. You <laughs> seem great. And I'm sure, like, we don't know your whole story. Who knows what happened? No. But he calls the dad, and the dad is fucking stoked as fuck he looks like he's in smash mouth like he's just a great dad <laughs> yeah i mean when, when we when we heard of hunter's dad i kind of assumed like a very good old boy down south guy which he is but like you said he's he's wearing like wraparound ray-bans and has like a guayabara <laughs> shirt like a mexican wedding shirt right which is a a very odd stylistic choice like, he probably saw that in a like dicky store and was like you know I'm yeah, like yeah i like that um he also has like a great line like as soon as he gets on the phone with hunter he's like Oh, you got that? What? He's uh, he's also him and his mom like actually react to getting twenty thousand dollars like a real person like yeah. what fuck? And uh, he's like Hunter. He's like your rent gonna go up? And he's like he's like I knew you'd say that. And I'm yeah. like oh uh, like they joke around. And he's like he's like eh, I'm just playing. Hey, you know your rent's gonna go up around here, don't you? <laughs> I had a feeling you were gonna say that. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I, I the way lo- he's just playing was so. I'm like, the Hunter's dad is awesome. I know. Seeing like a middle aged white man in 2007 say, "No, nah, I'm just playing," with like that kind of like ease. Yeah, it fucking got me so hard. <laughs> oh, oh, I didn't know to do that. Yes. Um, and then his mom's just like screaming and is like, "Yay, go Hunter!" Like yeah. they're cute. I love Hunter's parents. Really. 
I talk shit, but Hunter's become a standout kid for me. I just like him. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, besides this episode, I, I don't remember much of him. But yeah, he, he seems like a good kid. And like, yeah, his dad's out of work. He needs some money. Hey, good, good for them. Yeah, best parents so yeah. far. And then right after that, we do get a little sneak peek that before they lock down the arcade, Jared walks over to it. He's like, oh, it's still open. Hey, it's dog. still open. The games are calling to me. I need to get one last dance in so before he, they close the bar. So he goes in DDRs, and he's, he enters his name in the high score, and he's like, you see it being slowly entered. He's like, Dad, dance man. <laughs> yes. Instead of the classic SEX, he types in, Dance, dance man, man. And, it's, and it's beautiful and it's that's beautiful. why it was a perfect episode and then the um the end credit is just layla and taylor standing in the chicken house and taylor's holding a chicken kind of near layla and she's like that stinks she's like no and taylor's like no it doesn't she's like that's either the breath it's either chicken or your breath and that's the end <laughs> it was a great episode it was just like uh, a plus you know it was funny there were some stakes they actually picked a fun prize. I, they should have picked more fun prizes. Oh, I know. I mean, I, I understand. I mean, some of the prizes early on were like, either you sleep on the floor or you can like wash your little dirty well, armpits or something, you know. Well, and that's now making me mad that I wish they were supplied regular things that Pioneers had. And I wish there was more instances of them picking between something really fun and really like like a library is like is good but it's not necessary and i know like maybe librarians and like scholars are like it is necessary but you know what i mean it's not like toothbrushes here's what it is this was like a great example of a, a reward choice because it was something nerdy versus something fun whereas in the past it's been something fun versus something like crucial completely yeah essential like right. like, tamp like, food. like tampons for these <laughs> bleeding 13 year old girls it's true like there should have been more like non-essential choices yes. that are just a clear evidence of are you smart or dumb according to a cbs <laughs> grandparent yeah um but yeah I, great episode i'm really i'm feeling like i'm on a high yeah. and for the remaining apps because the last few were a little dark we're back in the light this is why we watch kid nation and you know a funny thing about this episode order that i just realized what is that 13 episodes is <clears throat> excuse me 13 episodes is like your classic prestige tv episode numbers wow they really were going for gold and, and sometimes Stars. You, sometimes you'll you'll watch an episode of like a great old hbo show and be like Ugh, episode nine is kind of a stinker but yeah then, but then 10 11 and 12, oh oh baby that penultimate hbo episode that sets everything up it's true oh. it's so true i'm hot i'm heated i'm excited i want more of it yeah um two episodes I, left this is we, we're we really doing it stretch. we're really doing it um gold star who are you gonna give your gold star to oh my god um I'll be honest, I have not thought about this until two seconds ago, so you go first. Okay, gold star. I mean, I'm going to dub Hunter's dad. That's Hunter's that. dad. <laughs> Slash Hunter. Like, I really, Hunter, the green team has the best kids. I know, like, rewarding, we've been rewarding white men, like, all through history and this season, but you just got to like Hunter. He's so likable. He's that dream boy next door. He's Devin Sawa, mm -hmm. fantasy. He can tell he's like people like him. He's like chill Christian, as we found out before too. Mm -hmm. And his dad was great, and I I was really happy. It was felt like a deserved gold star. Green definitely won because of him, mm -hmm. and he's been hauling ass all over town. Love Hunter, Hunter great kid. Hunter was awesome, um, and, and his dad as well. I, I I guess I would give my gold star. Um, to the indigenous people of the Americas. Mm. As we learned in this episode, I didn't know this before this episode, but um, they were treated very poorly by uh, the government of the United States. Yeah. And as these beautiful children taught me today, that was wrong. So they, they get the gold star. Cool. Um, specifically, That's the, little, the, specifically the Comanches. A little late, but appreciate the thoughts and prayers yeah. that you're giving out with a gold star hey look they have all the all the pool tables they want nowadays so they're they're doing great <sighs> okay well just just casinos full of pool tables oh my god casinos full of root beer <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god i didn't even think about that too that they, they've like they haven't really been kicking back the bottle as much lately in uh kid nation oh, thank god <laughs> i mean they've been drinking more water you, you saw that water tank it was empty yeah true gotta keep that pee pee hole fresh and clean the, these kids all got like UTIs. Like, <laughs> Dirty fingernail sure, UTIs. UTIs. I was going to say like diabetes or kidney stones, but yes, they got UTIs from drinking. I mean, we haven't really liver. looked. I mean, a future episodes will definitely be into the lifelong health effects of being on this show, which I'm sure there's a few. 
Yeah, I mean, um, th- these kids were basic, like, you know, <laughs> they were basically like sailors on boats back in the day when mm. they didn't know about oranges and lemons. So they all, they all have scurvy. Well, they picked produce. Thank God, but that was like day 80. <laughs> <laughs> True. Well, um, we'll be back with episode 12 in the Kid Nation Nation, and we'll see you next time in Bonanza City. Yeah, see y'all. And remember, howdy means goodbye and hello. So uh, a hearty howdy to Howdy. You all.